Uh, you remembered what uh, the general name for this functional group was. That was good. Do you happen to remember what the general name for this type of functional group is? Uh, it's an anhydride. That's great. Absolutely. That's an anhydride. That's another one that students uh, tend to have a hard time remembering, but so it's good that you know that. It's got to be a carbonyl connected to an oxygen connected to another carbonyl. Carbonyl connected to an oxygen connected to another carbonyl. Is this an anhydride? Yes. Yes, it is. So now we need to learn how to name this. Okay. Well, notice that the chain over here has three carbons. One, two, three. Three carbons. The root for three carbons is probe. There's no double bonds, mm -hmm. so we have am instead of eme or im. And then we simply need to learn what the suffix is for anhydrides. And it turns out that the suffix for anhydrides is oic anhydride. There's a two word suffix, oic anhydride. So this would be propanoic anhydride. Notice that there's a three carbon chain on both the left and the right. Mm -hmm. So we can name both of those three carbon chains as propanoic anhydride. It would be natural to wonder what would happen if we have different lengths on the different sides, and we'll get to that in a minute or two. But if you have a symmetric anhydride, you can just name it like this. Let's give a name to this anhydride. This is again symmetric. On both sides, there's a four carbon chain, which indicates but, no double bonds, so it's an, and the suffix is oic anhydride. Good. Let's name this. You were noticing that there would also be a common way of naming this. What root would we use in the common system here? The uh, uh, instead of using F, what would be the common root? The acid. Right, acet. It's good that you're remembering that again, except for acetone, acet means two carbons. Now, unfortunately, oftentimes the suffix is a little bit different for common systems as well. This is not called acetanoic anhydride. It's just called acetic anhydride. You couldn't really figure that out. It just has to be memorized. I think in the other series of videos, though, you'd already heard about, say, acetic acid. Yeah. So this is a similar pattern. So not only is the root different here, but there's a slightly different suffix. That's just the way things have fallen out historically in the common system, acetic anhydride. Now notice that there's three carbons on the left here and four carbons on the right. Mm -hmm. So this is an asymmetric anhydride, and we simply have to name the two sides separately. All right. Well, on this side we have three carbons, which would be indicated by propanoic. Cool. 
On the right-hand side, we have four carbons, which would be indicated by butanoic. And we still use the same suffix, anhydride. So we would have butanoic, propanoic, anhydride. And it goes uh, alphabetically at this point. That's right. Okay. Butanoic, propanoic, anhydride, three separate words. And like you said, we can name the two chains in alphabetical order. Notice that the carbonyl carbon has to be counted as part of the carbon chain. 